Hey guys, what's up? I am John Merritt from BornToProduce.com and in this video we're going to take a bit more of an in-depth look at Very Audio 3 which comes built in with Cubase 10 Pro. So Very Audio has had a complete overhaul and is now really absolutely brilliant. All the important functions are now controllable from these nice little control points that you can see on the segments called Smart Controls, making it much faster to edit your vocals. For example, the top control point you use to straighten the pitch and the bottom one you can use to quantize the segments. The ends are time warp functions, so let's just show you what that's like. It's actually really powerful, uh, so you can just sort of time stretch any bit of vocal you want just to match it in time with anything else and obviously it will jig everything else around like it did in the old very audio but the algorithm has now been improved um, so even on really long drawn out notes like that I mean that's way longer than it should be and it actually sounds pretty damn perfect that's not bad at all Just a slight sort of little bit of aliasing perhaps, but it's very minute considering how much I'm stretching that bit of audio. Um, so that's been improved, that's really cool. So just a very quick plug, the track that's playing in the background now and the vocal that we've been sort of looking at is actually from our drum and bass course, which is made in Cubase 10. So it's making a track literally from nothing right through to the final mix down. If you're interested in that, please go to boardsproduce.com and check it out, thanks. So I noticed that the sort of inspector area on the left hand side is slightly different. We don't have the segments uh, section now anymore, that's actually gone. Um, but we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, we have pitch snap mode, so at the moment it's set in absolute, which means if I uh, just sort of tweak, oh, let's just move that out a bit. So if I just tweak it, it will just snap it to the nearest sort of uh, correct pitch. If I have it in relative, then when I move it, it'll keep it relative, sort of, you know, the same pitch relative to where it was. And if I have that on off, then I can just freely uh, move that away. You used to just have to hold shift to do that. Now you can just select off and that's fine. You can just drag them wherever you want, which is actually my preferred sort of way of using very audio. So you still got your quantize pitch and straighten curve uh, controls as well here down the side. You've also got a formant shift now as well. So let's just, pick a decent so let's just use formant shift on this um you want to use this very subtly if you want to just change the the sort of tonality of a voice um, and just sort of add a bit of emphasis or, or take a bit of emphasis away you can either sort of make it sound um a bit sort of not darker perhaps or, or brighter um by adding more formant shift or darker by sort of reducing the formant shift so uh, let's just make that a bit more extreme so you can hear what's doing. So obviously that's way too much as it is, but just having a little bit can be quite nice. Just adds a bit more emphasis to it. So that's pretty cool. And of course, if you sort of go a bit more extreme on lots of vocals, this could be pretty good for some sort of more EDM uh, type tracks, you know, like future bass and all that sort of thing where you want sort of nice pitched up vocals. Even though that's a bit extreme, but whatever, you know. You... So you'll be able to use that to sort of tweak things a bit and, and have a bit of fun with that. Now, one of the main annoyances with the older Vary Audio was to split a segment. You had to switch modes into the segment mode, which was up here. There's another little button you had to go and press. You go into segment mode and then you sort of go along. You'd split your audio where you wanted it to. And then to change the pitch of these segments that you've just split up, you had to go back up and go back into very audio sort of pitch changing mode. And then you could be free to, you know, quantize it or do whatever it is that you wanted to do. Uh, which was not very good for workflow. Well, no longer, this has now been integrated. So as you can see, you just got the split segment down the bottom there, so it's just always available to you. So once you split your segments, if you want to, you can also glue them back together. So once you know, you've got two splits there, or you can even glue other segments together. So you just bring your cursor down to the bottom right-hand corner or left-hand corner, it doesn't matter which, uh, and you'll see that that little line sort of lights up. You can just click that and it will just glue those segments together. As well as this split sort of bar down the bottom there, you can actually hold just Alt or Option on a Mac uh, anywhere in the audio segment and then just split it wherever you like. So those are the sort of most basic um, sort of controls that everybody wants to use, which is the straight and pitch, 
quantize pitch and of course the time warping functions split these are all the main things that you're going to want to use but there are of course other controls so you might be wondering where the pitch bend functions are well you can still bend the pitch and for that you need to activate all of the smart controls so up in the sort of inspector up here you'll see here under edit very audio you've got smart controls so if you click on that you can actually select show all smart controls uh, and then when I go to an audio segment you'll notice that I've got quite a few extra controls going on around my segment. There are a few things of note here but we'll start with the pitch bend. So before with pitch bend you sort of came up to the top and a little sort of line appeared and you'd click on that line and it would sort of define where you want to bend the pitch from in your uh, in your audio segment well now you've got the center control so this one you just literally set or it actually says what it is it's the set tilt rotate anchor now you use the same tilt control point for both ends of the audio segment so for example if i want to bend the pitch up here on the right hand side I just set my anchor point, so there, so I want to bend it that much. Now I go up to this control point in the top right hand corner, and then I can bend the pitch as I used to be able to. And as you can see, it's bending from that actual control point. But then if I want to modify or tilt the left hand side, then I've got to move my anchor. I'll move that to where I want to sort of bend it on this side. And then again, the top left hand control, obviously, for the other corner. And then it will bend from that anchor point. And then, of course, you can move that anchor point and bend what you've just bent and you know all the rest of it so that's how you do pitch bends in very audio 3 so bottom left is the shift formant so if you want to you can just use this to control the formant so you can see it over there it's just moving so it's just a quick control for that if you so want to use it bottom right is the volume control so you can change the volume of each individual segment if you so wish so you'll notice as well these sort of strange little uh, triangular control points so this is to set the range of the of the straightened pitch basically so if you want to leave the ends unaffected and you just want to straighten out the pitch in the middle so let's say i just want the the vibrato on the end of this uh, sort of uh, vocal word so i want to keep that vibrato but i want to completely straighten out the rest of it say uh, apart from perhaps like the first sort of uh, few milliseconds of it so now I've set those points, uh, what I can do is come to straighten pitch and you'll notice that when I do, it only straightens a bit which I haven't had selected. So those uh, control points just leave that, uh, leave the vibrato alone. So it just sort of tightens up the vocal a bit. There's not so um, sort of floppy or, or whatever you want to call it or pitch variation isn't so great in that middle section, but it just leaves the bits that you want. So quite a handy little feature that. Um, I, don't think I'll use it all the time, but certainly for certain phrases, especially like this, that'd be that'd be quite a nice little touch, and like a nice little tool to be able to use. So another quite nice little function that we've got now in Very Audio 3 is the MIDI reference track. So let's say um, you're trying to tune the, the vocal and you've got a particular chord structure in place. Uh, so you can select the chord structure by selecting the instrument that the uh, that your chords are on. Select it from the drop down list there. And then you'll see there that it all pops up behind. So you can see uh, what the sort of main notes in the chord are. And then you can adjust very audio uh, levels or pitch um, accordingly. So, which is just another really nice sort of visual aid to help you pick the right pitch uh, for that particular vocal effect. So those are really the main sort of changes in Very Audio 3. They're great changes. There are a couple of the little things that have been sort of neatened up, if you like, under the functions menu. So you can extract the MIDI here. You can, if you want, reset all of the pitch changes or reset all of the curve changes or the pitch shift, uh, sorry, formant shift changes and warp changes if you want. So it's just uh, sort of been neatened up and streamlined and everything is just going to work a lot quicker. So this is really cool. I'm very much looking forward to actually editing vocals in Cubase now. It's just going to be a more streamlined and nicer to do process. Okay, so that's it for this little brief sort of look at Very Audio. So please remember that we actually have a full course on processing or recording first and then processing all of the vocals in Cubase 10, which is brand new out and will basically take you through everything you need to know about how to record vocals what sort of setup you need, what mics, everything like that, right through to actually recording and then processing those vocals to sort of 
get them all really nice and tight to get them to sit well in the mix um, and it's just a really in-depth course and it's going to be absolutely great for you if you're going to be recording vocals so definitely go check that out please also do hit the like button if this video is helpful for you and do subscribe for more videos we are going to be releasing absolutely loads of stuff on Cubase 10 over the coming months so please do hit the alert button as well to make sure that you're notified about them when they come out thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next one